Hi guys, welcome from uh, Balmy, Canada. Um, today we're going to talk to you about the Ruger Precision Rifle in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh, this rifle really opens up a whole new world of possibilities for the precision rifle shooter um, or the hunter. Um, it's a really soft shooting cartridge with a fantastic ballistic coefficient that is really effective and precise from anywhere from 50 to 1600 meters plus. Uh, the cartridge stays um, supersonic until about 10, 50, 1100 meters at sea level. So right away, if you're going up at altitude, you know you're going to get even better than that. Uh, if you start looking at uh, reloading your own cartridges and you know possibly using Berger uh, VLD rounds, you're you're gonna get even better performance, uh, better precision than you are with the, the Hornady factory ammo. Um, that said, I've already seen uh, problems with how they're finishing the necks on their on the Hornady ammo. You've got a round that's gonna cut the wind really, really well. So for the beginner, this is gonna make, you know, your mistakes in calling the wind uh, that much less visible. You're gonna be able to get away with more stuff. Uh, to the, the advanced, you're gonna be that much more precise on target. Um, the 6.5 Creedmoor is really a blend of the 30 caliber, the 308, and the 6 mil. The 6 mil is sort of an underpowered cartridge. It's really precise. Um, but it's definitely underpowered and you're not gonna, you're not gonna find it effective for hunting, um, anything, you know, too big. You're just not gonna get the ballistic performance. The 7.62, uh, you know, it gives away a bit of velocity, um, for a softer shooting cartridge. So this kind of mixes the two of them together and you're getting a good balance. It's raising the bar in a market that's predominantly been controlled by, uh, by Remington. And it's taking all the best features of the AR platforms and, you know, Remington's or, you know, other similar bolt guns and combining them in a package that's really going to be familiar for both shooters that are tactical and precision rifle. Um, you've got a trigger that's roughly two and a half pounds out of the box. It's got a, a tiny bit of take up, like a double action AR trigger, yet it breaks extremely crisply. Um, and it's very predictable, there's, there's no surprise. Uh, you take up a little bit, you feel it come to that wall, and then pop, it, it goes off. Um, the layout of this gun is, is pretty much a do-it-yourself gun if you wanna add anything to it. It uses, uh, um, Samson key mod four rail. So you've got all these like positions here where you can add lasers um, in whatever other device like sling sling attachments that kind of thing to the rifle. On the front we have a 5 8 by 24 thread and you can see that this rifle is equipped with a Terminator T2B uh, muzzle brake. This is one of the most effective, if not the most effective, muzzle brake on the planet um, for its size. And you know, if you're comparing muzzle brakes of the similar size or similar caliber and stuff like that, Terminator is hands down the best. They're the softest shooting. They reduce uh, your muzzle jump, um, and they're going to keep you on target for your follow-up shots better than anything else. Uh, they're a thread-on brake. I'd never recommend a clamp-on brake. Right away, you're getting distortion with a clamp-on brake. It, uh, it's impossible to to take a, a piece of metal, clamp it over something, and then torque it down and not expect to have some kind of deflection and point of impact shift. Um, that said, with these brakes, uh, I've got them on four guns, and I've had zero lateral point of impact shift and with um, you know rifles that I'm shooting out to 1900 meters like such as my 338 uh, all I've seen is I've seen an actual uh, decrease in the amount of elevation that I need um, d due to the tolerances in here I think there's just you know that millisecond more of pressure behind the bullet to keep it going 
And so what I've seen with two 308s and a 338 um, and another friend's 308 is that the impact is shifted straight vertically, no lateral. Um, that also comes down to how well your gunsmith threads your barrel. So I always recommend that you get a reputable, reputable gunsmith to, uh, to do any modifications because you're dealing with 10 thousandths of an inch when you're, when you're threading these things. That said, again, uh, this came factory with a 5 8 24 thread. Uh, you've got your key, key mod um, slots on the bottom, so you can add a rail system to, to the bottom of the rail if you want to shoot off a bipod, such as the one we've got in the background here. Um, you've got a fairly AR-type uh, chassis here. Um, you've got a hook in the front here so that if you're loading up against a barrier, you know, in some kind of unconventional unconventional uh, position, you're going to get a good bite here and have something to load it up against. You've got an oversized bolt handle. Really nice, smooth operation. Um, this thing's breaking in really, really nice already. The back of the rifle is hinged. And all it takes to... Uh, pop the bolt out is a button on the back and you can see that you've got a super easy gun to clean you're not fighting with the stock or anything like that in the back here in this plastic piece you see there's a couple of tools in there for adjusting the trigger and for uh, for cleaning the bolt um, and make sure you don't have any carbon build up in there that said I don't really see that as an issue except every you know 500 or so rounds unless you're really really picky if you're smooth it locks in place really easily a um, couple of things here that are standard AR equipment you've got your AR pistol grip which I'm not really a fan of I would switch this out to something that was rubberized because when you're shooting in cold or wet weather you really want something you can get a good handle on um, so it's not sliding around in your hand uh, you've got your standard AR type safety. Now, me personally, I would switch this out to an ambidextrous, uh, which I prefer. The factory safety is a little tight, but that's good Good if you're, you do happen to use this as dual purpose for hunting. Um, you've got a length of pull adjustment on the back. It's as easy as flipping a lever here. Uh, some adjustments you have to undo the nut on the other side just a tiny bit. And you've got um, you've got an uh, adjustable uh, cheek, cheek crest here that moves fore and aft as well as up and down. So depending on your ergonomics, you can really play with this thing and get a lot of adjustment out of it. It uses a standard AR tube, which uh, is really advantageous because all you have to do, like all you have to do to switch this thing out is find. Um, you know whatever stock you want to use if you don't like this one that said this is a fantastic stock um, I'm not sure what you would gain uh, except maybe looks like if you were to switch out to uh, a mag pull precision rifle stock um, on the top of the gun we have a 20 MOA rail system here that comes factory with it that to me is huge I see a lot of guns come off the factory floor with uh, a zero MOA rail and then I see customers um, you know asking me what should I put on this thing and they either balk at the 120 bucks for a night force uh, rail or they can't find anything um, one customer had to go and beg a manufacturer to to make something up for his Mossberg night train in the end after waiting months they just said they couldn't do it uh, probably didn't see a lot of money in it um, Downfalls to this rifle, uh, not a whole lot. Um, you know, it's it's heavy, but every precision rifle that I've ever owned is, is heavy to an extent. Um, it it doesn't move when you shoot it. The uh, the brake takes care of any recoil. Um, and and just the the pistol grip. That's really it. Like I don't have any other problems with this rifle uh, 
taking this on as a new project was a piece of cake. There was really nothing to it. Um, she shoots fantastically well, and you know, in the first day of shooting with it, you know, stacking rounds at 860 meters and uh, putting rounds through the same hole at 100 meters. So the gun comes factory with two accurate mags. I know in the U.S. you can use uh, Magpul SR25s, you can use some M14 type mags. Um, here in Canada, this is probably your best option. Um, I really like the fact that, you know, it's, it's pretty in there. Like, it's not rattling around, so if you, if you do happen to be doing some kind of uh, law enforcement or sniper exercise, you're not going to have this thing banging around like you do on um, some of the aftermarket magazine uh, bottom metal systems that you see on the Remingtons nowadays. Uh, the magazine release is really easy. You can see, it's just, it's there, it's ambidextrous, smooth. Um, you've got a really nice positive engagement there. You can tell when it's in, you can hear when it, when it snaps into place. So, I have no qualms about recommending this rifle uh, to anybody that's getting into the sport or who's already into it, but uh, buyer beware that the 6.5 Creedmoor is not really available in Canada um, too much yet. So that said, you're looking at reloading for this rifle and um, in the end you're going to save a lot of money that way as well and you're going to get better results. Reloading really allows you to control all the factors of your ammo that's, that you're feeding your rifle. Well, let's get to some shooting and show you guys how this puppy works.
Right, so there in the middle of the screen you can see the first rock we were shooting at, which is about six, seven inches tall and probably eight, nine inches wide. Um, pretty small actually. And uh, we stacked three rounds on top of that. And then uh, further up the hill, let's see if I can do this kind of smoothly and find that other rock face we were shooting at. This is 960 meters and we're just shooting for that pale orange spot. Looks kind of like a maple leaf, uh, like our logo. And you can see our three rounds stacked on top of each other there, uh, just top left of it. Uh, we spent a bit of time um, finding our dope. It's a bit of a process, but when you're taking a scope off of another rifle, this is actually off my 308, uh, 20 inch barrel, drastically different velocity, uh, ballistic coefficient than this rifle, but we're making it work with a hasty zero for this review. Um, this is our second day with this rifle and it has been a fantastic shooter. 